nice to meet you finally in person. <laughs> Let me give you an agenda. Right. We have a few chairs over here, Mr. Spectrum. If you're interested in sitting there, anywhere you can. Choosing to uh, not really not to max out on the number of units and also on the square footage as well. So uh, I'm doing like my homes basically in three groups, um, very similar to one of the, the buildings on the lot. Like, uh, I mean, a couple of, uh, buildings down uh, on the to the north. There was uh, another building with uh, the same type of massing. I can show you a picture if you want. 
So, and that union is basically, what are we going to say? So, so this building here. And this building has a raised floor, whereas my building has touched the ground as much as possible with lower ceiling height. 57, 17? Yeah. 57, 11. That's my book. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 it is built on raised floor, and so on is a two-story building. Uh, much higher, I mean, the, the ground floor is much higher. So, so basically, my, my building, my design would be skinnier and taller, instead of being bulky, like going across. So that's the choice that I made, and I thought would be, um, would make it less, uh, so what's the full height from the from the street to the to, to the, the gable? To the gable about about thirty five feet. So you you know, you have a, a building that's very small and that you have five or six feet and then you have twenty feet for each the two floors and then five feet for the parapet that's close to thirty feet. So, so I'm a little bit higher at the feet. Yeah. Yeah. So but obviously yeah, I just wanted to explain the, the reasoning behind this. So instead of one big building which means it's like the big apartment buildings, uh, you know, like two or three uh, buildings from the corner. So that, that was a very bulky building. So instead of doing a massive building like that, I chose to do it more in a small, spacious and airy way. And plus, this type of building that we're planning <coughs> is the, uh, uh, what we call the small lot, and also, in, you know, with uh, trying to be more environmentally uh, responsible and with a lot of green features, you know, and so on. So, um, so, so it's a completely different type of building. Uh, and uh, in terms of the architecture, we're still working to finalize the design. So we're like, trying, you know, looking at different uh, type of uh, materials and so on. So this is not, this is more like a massive, just to show you what height, 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 and, height and, and the space, space. Of, you know, but the mass and not the final detail. So, uh, so basically, uh, so what we're trying to do is for these uh, smaller homes, some of them are like uh, uh, 1,300 square feet up to maximum of uh, the bigger, biggest one is 1,600 square feet. So they're, they're not small, but then they're not big either. Mm -hmm. So, and they would, each one would have two parking spaces. And I understand most of the, uh, I don't say how, how bad this, 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 the parking is on the street. Uh, actually, it's over the system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the thing is, like, most of the existing buildings that are already there, they don't have enough parking. For instance, this uh, 16 unit that's on the market for quite a while. So this one, it has only five parking spaces, according to the real estate list. Mm -hmm. the problem. So, um, uh, it's, you know, the lack of, you know, the, the number of parking spaces is something that we can we can work with. But but for now, I have provided more parking than, than the code required. What are so, you doing about residual parking for folks that are visiting your uh, town, your, the town of, town of folks? Right. Uh, well, I figure uh, this is a, a, a different type of of, of homes that's geared to a, a different. Um, uh, to the younger people, and so on. So, and then there's a bus line right in front of the. You know, yeah, there's also with, with any kind of a, uh, apartment complex or condominium complex or townhome complex, there's going to be residual parking. Right. There's folks coming to visit those folks. Bear in mind that we can't park in Alhambra. You need a permit. Mm -hmm. Park on the Alhambra side. So on that LA side, it's maxed out. There's nowhere to park. Well, so, like, I, I just have to, uh, you know, um, you, you cannot, uh, well, uh, to compare this with uh, a real life situation, you know, where I would be allowed to do a, a, an apartment building with every home, with every unit having two or less parking spaces. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I'm providing more than what I was required to, to provide already. Uh, a little tax. Right, I understand that there may be a concern if I can find ways to... And that's aside from all the architectural design aesthetic issues. Okay. That's, yeah. if, if, if that's there another are ways for me to, uh, to increase, I would definitely, definitely look into it. Okay. 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 Okay
this one's a little bit more informal because I want to make sure that all your questions are answered. So is there any other questions that you may have for Mr. Long? Yeah, um, can I just get your Angela Kitty? Um, I appreciate that you've tried to take into consideration the concerns about parking, uh -huh. but um, in addition to visitor parking, I'm concerned that your two spaces per unit might be sufficient if they're one bedroom units. But if there are multiple, like two bedrooms or three bedrooms, that means older kids with cars and more people living in each unit, that would make the parking that you plan for even less sufficient. Well, that's the way that the LA zoning code is written for. Uh, either a home or like a, a two or three bedroom uh, apartment, you would need two spaces and four. Like a one bedroom, you would need one and a half or a, 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 a single, you would need just only one space. If you have done studies and taken into account, so that's the, the rule across the board in the city of Los Angeles. So. But so your units are mostly two bedrooms? Or yes, three bedrooms? Yeah, yeah, mostly two bedrooms. <laughs> And these would be rentals, not no, no, this would be. Oh, I didn't uh, make myself clear. So these would be uh, what we call small lot uh, townhomes that means townhomes built side by side. And but without a homeowner association, which would make it more affordable because then you don't have to pay for maintenance and so on. Yes. Uh, question about that, and if you don't have an HOA, who provides the groundskeeping? Who's going to be doing the maintenance on this project? So, um, so each lot has owns the space next to it, uh -huh. and then the only only thing that um, uh, like a maintenance association needs to do is to maintain the driveway. And so there will be some sort of an HOA, right? But with much lower, uh, in, in looking at like thirty, forty dollars a month versus some of the uh, condos there, like. Are you asking is there any changes? What can you actually build by right? By right means I don't have to come to any of these meetings. I can if I were to design an apartment building, I can just have my plan drawn up and, and the engineering done and just submit the city and then like, after the plan check, I'll be able to start building. But since I'm trying to subdivide the lot, that means... You have no architectural and, review board? Uh, no. 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 So, you are, so you are asking to subdivide? Yes, I am. Okay. Because I figure uh, home ownership is a better thing in terms of, you know, taking ownership of the... Okay. I'd like to ask... Committee here. What kind of outreach have you done uh, within the local area to to notify the community that this is happening? Mm -hmm. um, I'm honest with you. At this point, we haven't really done any uh, <coughs> outreach. I know that the city has not notices to I think 500 feet surrounding the area, so there is some notices that are here that have to be July 10th and forth. The most that I've done is the postings and emails. But you're right, we haven't done as much yeah, as we So I know that there's much more concern than we have here today. How long have you been working on this project? A couple years. Is that a new question? Is that too bad in what they're doing? Yes. Okay. Okay, I can answer. For a whole election process, he actually came to the committee last year, but we couldn't do anything after we were putting it out. If I can recommend, you guys live near this. Okay. What I recommend you do is, this is called, this is probably going to go to court. I recommend you get all your neighbors, no fiber, and if they have whatever concerns they have, call the cop. And bring them to the court. And stay here for concern. They're going to either go on it, uh, or call it again. And this is the board meeting that's on Thursday? No, that's the same thing. So, this is, you know, Val Market was previously on the former uh, land use committee, so he's very knowledgeable in regards to the development there happening today, so I thank you for stepping in on this. He has a um, Thursday meeting with the city. Our next general board meeting is the first Wednesday of every month. Um, it does take a few hours.
August 15th. And what time yeah. emails would be accepted? You want to email me your letters as well as you want to email the hearing officer as well everybody to be concerned. So those marvelous hours don't have any historical protection? That's what I wanted. I didn't know Council and Research Office to try to. Because what he's replacing architecturally doesn't even come close to what's there. Um, you can compare that house to Grant Summer House over on Uridian. It's that era, that caliber of house. Which is similar to the home we own and the next door neighbor to this proposed property. Ours is built in 2015. We get a 100 year anniversary next year. And we're having a birthday party for our house. Because we're very excited about the historical value of it. I have a suggestion. I recommended to David to extend his commission money so maybe the community could get a better idea of what's going on and have a better, you know, at least uh, communication as far as what's going on and to maybe get the community to for or against it. But I don't think we know enough. Uh, and this is my fear that there's something coming into my community that's important that we all know what's coming in. I'm not trying to doubt it, but I have to admit it, but it's going to be like a little bit different. So, that's my recommendation. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Mr. Bob, can you address any of the historic ones? No, we've been going back and forth about that. So, what information have you received in the property historical evidence? Okay, so let me explain that a little bit. And, yeah, Andrew gave me this map, which I was crossing at that time. They don't want to find out what's happening. It's a, actually quite a long story behind this, because uh, this area is one of the the front line for the fight for the against the the Sunset Freeway. This is Sunset Freeway is coming out this way, and this is the first line of defense. So uh, back in um, uh, '98 or something, uh, yeah. So uh, when the city was doing the uh, trying to set up a, a historical zone for the northeastern area, uh, they hired someone to uh, do a, a windshield survey to, uh, to basically drive around, and, which covers a, big, a huge area. And then this is part of it. And uh, this is a preliminary finding that, that he, you know, he thought these buildings would, be, would have historical value. And, and, and my building is, is this one here. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So the white means is that it's not historical? No, 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 no. Let's go back on the definition first. Okay, so this was, this was one of the surveys, first survey, okay? And then, um, um, and then um, because this is so important for the, the freeway type, so they tried to uh, apply for historical uh, uh, status with the uh, National uh, Historic uh, Register uh, which is based in Washington, D.C. And uh, Carol uh, Shaw, who was the uh, official keeper of the, of the National Registry, uh, she, in 1995, she came down with a ruling after a lot of appeals and so on. At first, uh, the, the historian didn't think that this was uh, you know, historical, but then after a lot of appeals, uh, she came down with this. And this is the, the uh, revised map, and, and, and all the documents are accurately sent to I, I received directly from Carol Show's office, and I uh, forwarded it to, to, uh, to Angela. And so this is the revised uh, boundary of the eligible uh, historical property. So, but it doesn't mean that like they are registered in any kind of registry. I check the national, I check the state, and I check the city. Uh, none of these properties were on um, any, any historical. At what point may we challenge uh, assertions um, that are being made because inaccurate things are being said? As soon as he finishes his statement, then I'll go back to public comment, and then I'll take that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so uh, this is uh, like something from the, the text that goes in front of this. It says, uh, at first, uh, they included uh, Huntington Drive because they wanted to provide a buffer. And then later on, they found out that because, uh, th that area doesn't have uh, really have historical integrity, so they took it out. And that's the reason why you can look at the full text. 
Um, sort of, uh, and then finally, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, sort of spread through things for the sake of time, uh, that in general, I'm sorry to throw out, but so far, not really been acting in good faith. Um, this, this meeting was originally scheduled on the 27th of June to be held on the 30th. On the 28th, he did come to some of our neighbors weekly and explain that some of his proposed demolition and construction just two days before the meeting. We spoke, so if you weren't, I mean, if you didn't answer the door, you didn't know anything about it. There were many neighbors who received no paperwork, no notices, nothing. We spoke in person for about 15 minutes. They were telling me about your plans, what you were thinking about, and at no moment did you tell me there was going to be a meeting within 48 hours. And that was literally the least you had to do. It's how we have to get public forum. And we, we just had a face-to-face, -face and you did not mention it at all. And that already tells me you're acting in bad faith, and I'm a little suspicious, and I'm worried. So there's many more steps, but I want to see the board. Um, thank you. I'm going to take another public comment. Mr. Tom Williams? Uh, I don't live on Huntington Drive. I don't know. Yeah, next door. However, you also mentioned that there will be no homeowners problem in other small lot developments in other areas. They have a major problem as to if somebody illegally parks within your area, who's responsible? If a sewer or storm drain gets plugged, or the underground parking. Who's responsible? If anything happens to, say, this unit, such as a fire, where's the fire truck? Who's going to be responsible for the common areas, not landscaping, per se, but making sure that no illegal parking occurs? There's also a matter that many other small lot elements provide for visitor parking. Two, two car spaces for each one of the units does not provide for any visitor work. There's also a matter that this intersection is not very user friendly because there's at least two or three major bus lines that come through that area. And you have problems of the bus turning radius and you're trying to get out of and get into this particular driveway. So you have a really vast circulation issue. So that's certain, several things. But the first one is homeowners association, if there is no homeowners association, and the associated costs. How do you make sure that it stays the way that you have designed it, number one, i.e. paint and repairs and lines and things like that? But who's going to be responsible for repairs and removal of abandoned cars or over parked cars. Thank you, Mr. Williams. This um, is not a, this is actually a condominium where right? you're trying to get in under the small lot ordinance in order to avoid serious things. Thank you very much. Mr. Sparza? Yes, uh well to some Sparza, 5618 Berkshire Drive. I am the uh, neighbor immediately behind this development. So these nine units and the three in the back would overlook my backyard. Uh, so I am vehemently opposed to the idea of a 35-foot building overlooking my backyard. Uh, that is a non-starter for me, and I will vigorously defend my rights in court. Uh, second, uh, I believe that this would be a degradation to the property values of mine, and to my neighbors. There are three very, very beautiful craftsman homes that are on the back side of my home that are on Huntington Drive. The three are a unit. They maintain value, and the work that has been done by Mr. Rivera in particular has really raised the value of the neighborhood and of my own home. And I've seen that recently as a consequence of an appraisal that I had to do. Um, and so I know that the destruction of that particular home and the introduction of nine units, whether they're condominiums, or small lots, or rentals, would lower the property values of the rest of the block. Uh, finally, I also concur 
uh, that uh, the parking would be a tremendous problem and would spill over to our block uh, on Berkshire Drive and Berkshire Avenue, which would further complicate matters on our blocks, uh, and that the entry exit from that building, given that there is a street light there, and it's a T intersection, would create a further traffic hazard uh, for traffic, pedestrians, and for people that are driving out of the two other remaining homes that are there that would be dwarfed in size. Um, and that this would interfere with the work that is currently being done by the neighbors who have created a historical overlay committee and have petitioned uh, the city councilman uh, to create a formal historic overlay zone that would include Huntington Drive because we consider it part of the historical overlay. No matter what Caltrans and other people have said, there has been no findings, and it is within the jurisdiction and the purview of the city council to determine what is a historic overlay zone, and no determination or uh, action has been taken on that as of this day. So that is currently being considered, it is under study, and uh, I have reached out to the councilman, and he has agreed to it put forth the motion that has been acknowledged by Mr. Rivera that is pending that would prevent even the destruction of this property to put in apartments. So, and I know that it is your property right. I'm a property owner. I'm a developer. I have to go through this process. I was involved in an eight-year environmental impact lawsuit that cost millions of dollars. I have won and lost in these processes, and I respect it, and I respect your property rights. But I have to tell you, that as soon as we would have gotten wind that you wanted to tear it down to put apartments, you would have been hit with lawsuits, and you would have been hit with the same ordinance. So I want you to disabuse you that you've lost anything. You never had it. 